If you don't double check while you're going along, you may find that everything's not going to fit in. Oh, it looks like I've got a bit of a problem here. Don't think I'm going to fit everything in. We're here in our new workshop and I'm here with Dylan, our new apprentice. Hi there. So Dylan started about a month ago and we thought it was about time after your first month to get you initiated properly and show you how to cut shadow foam. And we thought that cutting foam is quite a good job for an apprentice. You know, when I was an apprentice, an apprentice electrician, uh, there was times where I was a bit short for something to do and getting all the tools organised is probably a pretty good backup job. Today we're going to be looking at some of these uh, modular tool cases though. You've got the Dewalt T-Stack yep. with a drill and a few other bits and bobs and I've got a um, Makita Mac Pack with, a, with a, an impact gun and some other bits and they're, they're a roughly a similar size. These are the two inserts, so there you go, you hold that one up. So they're roughly about the same, aren't they? We've got the, the Makita 50mm in red, the Dewalt T-Stack in yellow. So this is your first shadow foam cutting lesson. So where do we start? Where do you think we start? What's the first thing you, we want to do? Well, from what I've seen, yeah. I think it's best just to plan out what we're doing first. Plan out, perfect. Yeah, layout. Layout is can be one of the trickiest elements um, because you obviously, you, don't, you can't have items too close together, but you want to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck. You, you, you're fitting the most amount of tools in there. So uh, if you want to put together a bit of a layout, what you think. So in here I've got uh, Makita um, impact gun. It's just a fairly typical layout you might have in one of your Mac packs, impact gun, spare battery, then some impact sockets. We're just doing this as a bit of a, a demo, but obviously this is the kind of, quite a typical kind of layout you might go for. So I've got all mine in there nicely laid out. So in here, yeah, are you thinking about putting the cable underneath the charger, are you? So the cable's gonna go underneath the wire, but then the plug socket bit will come out the side and sit about there. So the good thing, we don't really have to worry about depth too much in these cases, because this is a, like 100 mil at least, yours is similar. So we don't have to worry too much about the height. We can have them standing quite proud. Um, yeah, you want to make sure you, you're not getting within about 10 mil from the sides. Yeah, battery. This is good. I put this in, in there. With a, with a combi drill like this, usually you've got loads of little drill bits and bits and bobs that you want with them. But obviously, you, can't, you don't really want to be putting in drill bits loose. So a little box like this, this is a little really useful box. That's the brand. You can put all those in there and it, it's a lot easier to cut that in foam than cutting a load of little, you know, yeah, loosey goosey yeah. things. That's pretty good. I think you fit. Oh, where's the pump grips? Oh, I see what you're doing there. You, yeah, you're I'm trying just, to skip not, an item I'm out. Not, this I'm, was... not, I'm not putting that in. I think you are. You've Have got... you seen the size of it? No, you want to squeeze as much in it. There you go, something like that. Once you've got your layout, you want to take a photograph of it. So if you've got your phone, take a photo because Sometimes you take all that time. I mean, this is quite a small insert. You're probably going to remember this, but let's say you're doing like five or six of these Mac packs at the same time, and you're trying to balance all the inserts. Or if you're doing a toolbox like this one behind you, you're going to forget your layout. So take a photo, top tip. Right, so next thing is we start cutting. Um, so what you want to do is get one of the cutting kits from our website. This contains a scalpel, five blades, a repair glue. So if you make a mistake, you can then repair the foam and, and start again. Uh, it also includes uh, a set of anti-cut gloves. Now you want to make sure that you're wearing these whenever you're cutting the foam so you don't nip or cut your fingers. Um, for you, it's probably best we have a little bit more PPE, a bit more precaution. So this is what you need. Yeah, that should do it. Oh, mind you, the earphones are a bit too much. What? I said, I think the earphones might be a bit much. To be fair, I think the anti-cut gloves, I think they'll do you, to be honest. We'll just put you in them. There you go, that's, that's better. Do I have to keep the hat on? Safety first, mate. Right, first thing to do is pick your starting item, okay? So I would say start with your drill. So what you want to do is all of the other items, we've, bo we've both taken a photograph now, haven't we? Yep. So all the other items, you want to take them off the insert. And that way, we've got our starting item, we're both going to start with the drill. Now it's really, really important that when we're, when we're doing our first cut, that we keep the blade 90 degrees, perpendicular to the foam. It's so easy to go off on an angle. And you will, we do find customers 
and it's quite easy to do they'll draw it like they'll be cutting like this on an angle and it, it it's going to cause you more problems the, the reason why we use scalpels is because they're so thin we can use them to trace that's all you're doing you're not trying to cut down deep you're just trying to trace the outline so you want to have it perpendicular or 90 degrees to the foam and you want to just cut lightly all the way around and try not to overrun any of the edges yeah you want to just be following it like a pencil like as if you were drawing it with a pencil and you don't want to go out of the lines you don't want to make unnecessary pencil marks you just want to draw around the item as closely as you can following that profile all the way around right okay brilliant i've gone all the way around mine now have you cut all the way around the profile all the way around right and have you met back up at where you started i have done brilliant so now you take your drill off yep and what you want to do is you want to kind of press on the foam to show the cut you've made and you want to go all the way around and make sure that cut goes all the way around the item if someone's not cut all the way around they'll start cutting everything as deep as they can and then they'll lose the line so then they'll start guess you'll start guessing because you won't have a line to follow and that's where also mistakes are made so once you've cut all the way around pick up your uh, scalpel again you want to press on the foam to, to open up the gap that you've made you want to put the scalpel in and you want to just press down and the reason why we're opening up the gap here is to make sure that you don't go out of the lines the scalpel is very sharp and it'll quite happily and quite quickly go outside of your previous cut and it'll go off on a new line which you really don't want you want to kind of just all you're looking to do here is take that trace cut and make it deeper and at this point you only really want to go down 20 or 30 mil you don't have to go down very deep because all we're doing here is allowing ourselves to peel back the top layer brilliant okay so now what we're looking to do here we're not looking to peel the whole when it's a small item let's say we're just cutting in a single socket typically we can peel back a couple of layers at once because it's a small area when we're cutting when we're trying to peel back a big chunk of foam like that we don't want to try and peel all you know three or four layers out at once because we will just tear the insert in half we want to go layer by layer so what you want to be trying to do is take your index finger and just start on an edge and push your finger down and pull the foam towards you it does take a little bit of effort to start the peel going and that's because we don't want the foam to naturally unpeel itself over time once you've got the peel going you just follow it along with your fingers now sometimes if you struggle it is easier to do it without the gloves on so it's you can take the gloves off for this stage um, but it just depends what you're comfortable with and all we're looking for yeah is that first layer to come away great job that's it that's the safety drill you can have that yeah safety <laughs> with the apprentice <laughs> the apprentice now what you want to do is go with your knife again and you want to cut down with this drill essentially we don't want to cut all the way through it's 50 mil insert we don't want to cut all the way through because we want to see that red showing through so we want to cut down about 40 mil and leave a nice 10 mil cushion at the bottom so we use the side of the blade as a reference and we want to cut down 40 mil which is about to the top of that little nib there so you can use that as a you can use a, a ruler to measure that but because we don't have to be super accurate with this we can go to that point there so if you want to cut down and make sure the blade goes down to that nib and just follow that cut around all the way and then you can peel back I've already done that on mine so while you're doing that I'll peel back a few more layers and like I say I do find it a lot easier without the gloves on for the peeling That's good, so that's, that's quite a common uh, thing to see that is. So what you've done there is you've started peeling off about two layers from one side and then one layer from the other side. So there's, that's not a problem. I can also see you've cut slightly too far through there. Gone a bit too, a bit too far. It's not a problem if you do cut too far through. The, the foam will still sit in the bottom. You can still split it. So you can actually use the knife. If, if you do cut all the way through, you can use the knife to just part the layers and then put that piece of foam back in. Um, but here, you just want to basically you can lift it up off the table and you can just pull away the foam because you need to really get a grip on both sides that's your first layer 
and now you can just go again with this layer but try to because you've cut all the way through you can't tear it without holding the base layer yep. so you need to hold that base layer to keep make sure you you're not tearing the whole thing out yeah that's pretty good and just do a bit of a test fit test fit yeah that's pretty good okay so let's go on to the next item now so for me I'm going to start with um, the next big item, but I'm just going to double check my layout. Now I've got that drill in there, I'm just going to go back to just check my layout and make sure that I'm happy that everything's still going to fit. Because the problem is, if you just fully commit, you may have like a, a cumulative error. <laughs> if you put that slightly over and then everything else is slightly over, if you don't double check while you're going along, you may find that everything's not going to fit in. So we're just going to do a quick double check, make sure all my sockets Still going to fit there in a nice neat row. Yeah, that's it. And then we go on with our next item. So you go on with your next item, wherever that is, and then the same approach. So with my impactor here, I'll just show you where I'm going to put finger pulls. I want to be able to grab it from both sides. So all we need there is a, is a circle. And obviously we've already got some ready-made circles here with the sockets. So we put the circle, we put the, uh, the circle template where we want it. And now the trick is to not go over halfway. If you go over halfway, it looks like it's a circle. If you go less than halfway, we'll put one on the other side to match it and it'll look like an oval. And that'll be a much cleaner and much nicer looking, it'll a much better finish. Cut half the circle on one side. Then we'll pull that away. And on the other side, We'll just line up the two. Cut around again. And that's perfect. Now some of these items, if we put some of these sockets in stud up, they won't need finger pulls because you'll be able to just grab them at the top. You know what, I think I've got a bit of a problem here. I don't think I'm going to fit this in. Right, okay. So it looks like you may have changed your layout slightly, have you? Forgot to reference back to the picture. Right, okay. Well, that's the benefit, that's the advantage of having a picture and using it. And also double checking, as you're adding items in, you want to keep checking that everything's still going to fit. You're definitely not going to be able to get those grips in there anymore, are you? No. Unless you put them at the bottom, put that over there, and maybe go for something like that. So yeah, so do that then. Nice one. Right, so I'm really, uh, I'm really impressed with that, Dylan. You've managed to get everything at least 10 mil. And obviously you've, you've really managed to squeeze all the items in there and still maintain a pretty good gap. You've gone down to about eight mil there, but that's still acceptable because it's only on one little point. Mm -hmm. You know, when you've got items running alongside each other, you want to have 10 mil. So that's really good. And you've managed to peel them all out there quite nicely. So I think that's smashing, mate. You've done a great job of that. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Slap it in the case. And we'll do a comparison. Look how great that looks in the box. Yeah, it mm. looks pretty good. I think this Makita looks amazing. One looks better. You think it looks better? You must be joking. Look at it's my cut, in yellow. It's cut better. I'll tell you that. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, that Makita insert's turned out pretty good. And your one looks pretty good as well, mate. You know what? I'm actually really proud of it. I think that's turned out great. So we've not just got inserts for the Mac packs and the T-Stacks. We've got inserts for all of the major modular tool systems. We've got a couple of them here. So we've got the Dewalt Tough System Drawers, Festool Sustainer, Festool Sortainer, the Milwaukee Packout Drawers, Tough System Boxes, the Vaunt Boxes and Drawers, the Rigid Toolboxes, the Magnuson Toolboxes, the Metabo Boxes, Packout Organizers, the Hakoki Boxes, the Packout Boxes, the Bosch L Boxes, the Festool Large Boxes, the Metabo Medium and Large Boxes, the Stanley Pro Organizers, Stanley Pro Stack Boxes, the Makita and Festool Toolboxes, and the Festool Double XL New Sustainers. So that is pretty much all of the inserts we're doing at this point. But if we've missed out your tool system, 
send us a message. We'd love to add it to our range. So if you want to get your tool cases organized, head over to shadowfoam.com where we've got inserts for all of these cases, plus a few more, and we've got them in six different colors and two depths. We've got a special offer on right now. If you spend 50 pounds on the website, you get a free cutting kit. And if you want to see more videos like this and you want to see more of our apprentice, Dylan, subscribe to the channel. I think if an apprentice can cut foam, anyone can. I totally agree with that. So I think you can cut all the foam from now on. I wasn't part of my contract. You haven't seen your contract.